The map at the top right hand corner shows us where the biomes of the world are. Now this particular map has nine, um, but the terms that we use in class we use eight of them. This one also has the high mountain the ice which is similar to the alpine tundra. But what a biome is, it's an ecosystem that has um, the same climatic conditions no matter where it is on earth. So a tundra um, and light and this dark blue up here no matter where it's found, whether it's in North America or whether it's in Asia, is going to have similar climatic conditions. So a lot of times these biomes are classified by their latitudes because uh, the latitude is going to affect the amount of sunlight. Now how many biomes are there? It depends on the classification system that you're using. There are six major types, um, freshwater, and marine are our uh, two types of aquatic biomes. Freshwater, of course, is fresh. Marine is our salt water. And then we have deserts, forests, grasslands, and tundra. Tundra can almost fall into the desert category because it's basically a cold desert. It doesn't get very much rainfall. There's not a lot of vegetation. Now I mentioned that latitude is one of the things that can determine the climatic conditions of a region. This has to do with the insulation or the amount of sunlight. So the equator is going to be heated up more than the poles because the sunlight is more direct. That warm, wa warm air and warm water from the equator travels towards the poles and that colder more dense air sinks and moves back towards the equator. And so this, it's this constant movement of heat and this continual struggle for temperature balance that causes us to have changing weather patterns. If we look at the ocean currents, um, for you AP guys, this is a review, IB, this is new. Um, around the equator, uh, those are our red arrows. So all of our currents that originate at the equator are warm water and they carry that warm water towards both the North and the South Pole. And then as it gets towards the poles, you see our blue arrows, those are our cold water currents. Um, so the, seat, the, sur the temperature of the surface of the water is going to influence the air temperature and vice versa. Um, and that heat is transferred not only through the oceans or through the air, but back and forth between the ocean and the air. Now another thing that you're going to see where the sea temperature surface, sea surface temperature is higher, you're going to have higher rates of evaporation. So that's going to affect the amount of moisture and that can affect climate patterns as well. Right, of our two types of currents, we have surface currents. Um, and that's just the upper portion of the water, about the top 10%. Um, and then our deep water currents, that's the majority of the ocean water. The reason surface currents are only the top 10%, sunlight can only penetrate down three to 400 meters. Um, so once you get closer to the poles, uh, you're gonna have pretty much the same temperature throughout. The deep water currents um, are driven by density differences of the water. That can have to do with temperature, salinity, amount of evaporation. Now because we also have um, unequal heating of the Earth's surface, we're going to see pressure differences. Where you have more solar energy, you're going to have um, more evaporations. You have that air that's rising, you have low air pressure. Uh, when air rises, it takes any moisture with it, forming clouds and precipitation. At the poles, that warm air that's moved um, north and south is going to start to sink and when air sinks you get higher pressure. Because the air is sinking, there's no moisture to rise, no clouds are going to form, you're going to have sunny conditions. Air always moves from high to low pressure and it's this horizontal movement that creates the winds that we feel. Now we talked about how air rises from the equator, moves towards the pole where it sinks and comes back. Because the earth is spinning, these wind currents are going to appear to curve. So you can see we've got various wind belts. Now because of the differences in um, air pressure and temperature, that's going to affect the conditions in our various biomes. So we have um, our highest concentration or the most uh, solar radiation at the equator. So we're going to have more evaporation. And so as it rises, it forms clouds, falls back to the earth. So around our equator in the tropics, that's where most of our rainforests are located because we have enough rainfall to support 
um, the diversity of life, the many different types of vegetation and trees, you have to have large amounts of rainfall to be able to support a forest. You're going to have high productivity because of high insulation or high amount of sunlight. Okay, so if we look at a map where all of these biomes um, or where these rainforest biomes are located, we have the Amazon, the Congo and Africa, and we have Southeast Asia. All of those are right around the equator in areas where we're going to have lots of sunlight, lots of evaporation, lots of rainfall. All right, once um, that warm air rises from the equator, as we move towards like the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, that air starts to sink again, which creates a subtropical high. So this descending air in this high pressure area, both north and south of the equator, that is where many of our world's deserts are because remember high pressure sinking air you're not going to have the formation of clouds and precipitation. So once again looking at the map you can see here along the um, 30 degrees both north and south the world's major deserts. So we've got um, you know the Mojave Desert in the southwest United States, the Sahara, the Great Sandy, the Kalahari, the Patagonia and, and other very smaller um, desert spread out, but most of those are in that area of high pressure. Alright, here you can look um, and see where you've got rising air um, at the equator. You've got that sinking air that creates high pressure here for our deserts. And then once again here we've got rising um, air, low pressure. And so that's going to create rains once again. And we start seeing um, forests. You've got to have a lot of rainfall to support tree growth. So these are our uh, coniferous forests that we see um, across the northern part of the United States, southern Alaska, southern Canada. If you look at this graph, it shows, um, compares rainfall and temperature. Um, those that have low rainfall, those are our deserts, which are the higher temperatures, and our tundras at the lower temperatures. Um, our, all of our forests, notice, are up here with higher average um, rainfall per year. Now they also tend to have warmer temperatures that makes them more productive. So these are our tropical rainforest, temperate rainforests, and then our temperate deciduous, which is our biome. And then the colder temperatures we have the, the taiga, or those northern coniferous boreal forests. So it's the rainfall and the temperature that determines what type of biome is going to exist, what type of plants are going to grow there, and in turn, what types of animals can be supported by those primary producers. All right, this diagram has showed up on um, AP exams in the past. This is in the Miller textbook. Um, but also it does the same thing. It compares uh, the amount of rainfall to temperature. This time I've got temperature um, over here and I have the amount of rainfall. Uh, so in our tropical areas we have rainforests um, where we have our highest amount of rainfall. As it starts to dry we get our tropical grasslands. Remember that grasslands tend to form a buffer between a desert and a forest. Um, so then after our tropical grasslands, we have our tropical deserts. In our temperate climates, we have temperate forests. These are usually deciduous um, because in temperate climate, the higher latitudes, you're going to have colder winters, so they lose their trees to save energy. Then we have our temperate grasslands, which are our prairies, our steppes, our veldes, our pampas, and our temperate deserts. And then once we get to the higher um, latitudes. We have our taiga. Those are those northern coniferous forests. And then Arctic, we have the tundra. Tundras tend to be um, drier. They're in high pressure areas just like the desert. So it's basically considered a cold desert. Um, remember that we do have seasonal changes because of the axis of the earth. When we are tilted towards the sun, the northern hemisphere um, experiences summer the southern hemisphere experiences winter. Um, 
those biomes that are close to the equator aren't going to have the four seasons that we're used to here. Um, if they're around the equator, they might have a wet and dry season, but chances are they're going to have warm temperatures year-round. But the further you get from the equator, the more difference you're going to see in the seasons until you get to the poles and you're going to have, once again, you might have a short summer of a few weeks when you have um, closer to 24 hours of daylight, um, but you're going to have a much longer winter. All right, for um, IB, this is new, El Nino. For AP, this is going to be your review. Um, but El Nino is something that happens in the southern Pacific Ocean. And what happens is you have these westerly winds um, that weaken off of the coast of South America. So normally you've got the trade winds that are pushing this warm water over to Southeast Asia, which creates monsoons which are the, the rains that they need to grow their crops for the year. When these trade winds weaken, this warm water stays along the coast of South America and the monsoons end up hitting out here in the middle of the ocean. So you have drought over here in Southeast Asia. The other thing that's beneficial from normal conditions, when, the, when this warm water is pushed off the coast of South America, the colder nutrient rich from the bottom upwells, bringing nutrients to the surface for the fish. So when El Nino occurs, those upwellings are suppressed and the fishing industry is hurt. And I will attach the video of um, El Nino for you to look at.